And uh, now uh, we will uh, present the gold medal uh, of the society, which is the highest honor we give every year to uh, someone who uh, really has made uh, outstanding and uh, uh, steady contributions over decades. Uh, for that, we uh, have invited Dr. Howard Foreman, who will be introducing our gold medalist for this year. Hi, I'm uh, Howie Foreman. I have the great honor and privilege to uh, introduce the gold medal honoree at the ASCR this year. I'm sorry that I can't be there with you in person, but uh, as a member of the ASCR and as someone who's known uh, the majority of prior gold medal awardees, I just want to first say just how proud I am of, of them and the fact that Michelle Johnson will join them um, in this auspicious list. Um, I've known Michelle Johnson for uh, 22 years, but she goes a little bit back before that in her overall history. She was born in Maryland, uh, got a bachelor's in chemistry from the University of Delaware which she obtained in, in three years and then went off to medical school at Temple University. Um, I, I will say that uh, I was reading some background on her and realized she and I have one thing really in common from those years and that both of us were inspired by a TV show called Quincy, which I think m many of the older members may remember, but uh, a show that was led by Jack Klugman in I think the 1970s. Um, that inspired her to tie in her interest in chemistry into going to medicine and answering big questions. Uh, she did the diagnostic radiology residency also in Philadelphia Temple and then proceeded at the University of Pennsylvania to do a two-year fellowship in both diagnostic and interventional neuroradiology. Uh, she began her academic career at Temple University, continued it at Virginia Commonwealth University, and then uh, came to Yale in 1999. And let me take a couple of minutes to tell you a little about that. I, um, I was teaching uh, at Yale at the time, but my primary job was to be a uh, vice chair for finance and administration. And uh, I'm, I'm sort of the only person left in the chair suite from those years, but over the last uh, 25 years at Yale, I've been fortunate enough to be involved in the hiring of probably over 100 faculty members one way or the other. Certainly not all the faculty members, but a lot of our, our hires, particularly those that were going to have an important leadership role in the department. And I remember very well in 1999, the recruit for a neurointerventionalist to lead our neurointerventional uh, section and to really help us um, navigate a very challenging world in neuroradiology and interventional radiology at the junction of that and to be able to collaborate effectively with our neuro neurosurgeons, our neurologists, our emergency medicine and trauma teams and so on. Um, and from the first moment that I met Michelle, I knew that she was our linchpin to being successful in that area. Um, and she has been throughout that time. She has been here since that time and has been one of the most resilient, flexible, um, adaptive faculty members I've ever known came here really doing purely interventional procedures. And as the specialty evolved, went on to lead so many other adjunct services related to that and coordinating uh, both on a clinical level and an educational level with so many other departments. She was promoted to full professor of radiology and biomedical imaging, as well as a joint appointment in the neurosurgery department in 2014, and, and thus became the first African-American woman full professor at the Yale School of Medicine. Um, a not inconsequential moment in history for this medical school and one that we uh, honor with a picture of her um, in, the, in the main corridor of the medical school at the Dean Suite. Um, as I mentioned, she joined us uh, as Director of Interventional Neuroradiology, and she was dedicated to developing and growing a clinical neurointerventional practice to enhance patient care. Her clinical research focus has been on neurointerventional emergencies, uh, obviously stroke, aneurysms, AVMs, as well as head and neck bleeding, including carotid blowout. 
Uh, this, in addition to supporting the elective and outpatient neurointerventional uh, service lines. And let me just say an additional point about that as well. Our success in the emergency room, where Michelle does not work primarily, but where she is an emergency radiologist nonetheless, but our success there owes a, a huge debt to our strong collaboration and coordination with our neuroradiology section uh, for both stroke code patients, uh, CTAs of the Circle of Willis, um, and other advanced neuroimaging. And Michelle has been the principal liaison, principal champion for being able to use evidence-based approaches to improving clinical care across our enterprise. Um, I can't state that enough. I don't think people outside of Yale could fully understand how critical it is to have somebody with her credibility, with her stamina, with her passion uh, for making this work to understand how um, important it has been to have Michelle Johnson with us during this time. She's done a lot of things, both at Yale and nationally. I, I list them here, I'll go through them, but suffice it to say, this is a very uh, brief abstract of what she's truly accomplished. She's, she's built a referral practice with neurosurgery, ENT, trauma, vascular surgery, neurology. Uh, she is, or, or in fact, epitomizes uh, interdisciplinary education and establish a number of interdisciplinary clinical and educational conferences with many other specialties within our medical school as well as nationally. She was a Yale Medical Education Fellow in 2011-2012 um, and presented at AAMC in 2013 on interdisciplinary educational conference models. Her teaching efforts are, are also across a full spectrum from one-on-one -on -one tutorials to case-based conferences and full lectures uh, at RSNA and other meetings. She has done uh, tremendous teaching uh, of our house staff and our medical students, as well as other clinicians um, in, the, uh, in the School of uh, Medicine here. She, is the, uh, she was the chair uh, and has been a member of the Credentials Committee, Secretary of the Medical Staff. She's been chair of the Bylaws Committee and so on, very much involved in the institution, both at the health system level and the medical school level. Her research is also vast. She's done work on cerebrovascular disease with emphasis on anatomy and pathophysiology and the role that imaging plays in diagnosis and treatment. Uh, she's worked on, in areas of carotid blowout and related to head and neck malignancy. Uh, she has dealt with spine emergencies, traumatic and non-traumatic, including those that require rapid um, intervention and, and diagnosis. And she's done scholarly work published in both reviews and chapter format to enhance knowledge and improve our understanding of cerebrovascular anatomy and the pathology um, involved in head and neck emergencies. She is most recently the president of the American Society of Spine Radiology and importantly has done really critical work bridging the work of the ASSR and the ASER, as I'll mention uh, in a couple of minutes. She's been chair of diversity and inclusion committee of the American Society of Neuroradiology, chair of diversity committee for the Radiologic Society of Connecticut, uh, has done committee services for the ASER, the ASNR, and the ASHNR. Um, and service both for the uh, ACR and the ASNR um, in, in leadership capacities. She's done multiple presentations on diversity, and I think um, testament to her is that her, the, the, the critical mass of her work in, in academic medicine has been in clinical neurointerventional radiology and neuro, neurovascular radiology, uh, but she has seen herself as a important connector to uh, the issues of diversity, equity, inclusion, as well as health equity. And she is not just represented on committees in this way, but has really served um, on multiple panels, uh, webinars, and so on uh, to increase the pipeline of students that will enter radiology from underrepresented groups. She's also dedicated webinars through the ASNR to tackle these difficult subjects. Um, and she does this 
in addition to all the other work that she does. And you wouldn't know it if you saw her just as a clinician and a leader in the medical school, but she makes the time for this because she realizes how important it is. She's, uh, for the ASER, she's been actively involved. Her first lecture at the ASER was in 2007, Emergency Imaging of Aneurysmal Subarachnoid Hemorrhage. Um, she has served on the Education Committee. She's a current member of the Commission on Emergency Radiology and has been involved in uh, educational um, exhibits as well as publications uh, and was named a fellow of the American Society of Emergency Radiology in 2017. She's also, as I mentioned earlier, uh, built the collaboration between the ASER and the ASSR. Um, and this resulted in a very successful uh, meeting uh, for, both, um, uh, for both annual meetings and currently preparing for a special issue uh, for emergency radiology with this type of enduring content. Uh, here's a couple of pictures uh, which remind me just how it, um, embedded she is uh, in our department and among our uh, trainees and, and junior faculty members. Um, and, and I want to say a, a word about that. I think a lot of senior faculty members uh, go about their business and don't necessarily make the time to mentor, advise, and sponsor junior faculty members, but she has always been able to do that. Um, and that's why I was just so fortunate to be able to have her here. Uh, here's another picture of her from the ASNR, uh, surrounded by both senior faculty members as well as junior faculty members and some of our residents. But she's also a lot more than that. I mean, she's a mother, a grandmother, a daughter, and more. She's got uh, three kids and now a, a grandchild. Um, here are pictures of her with her mom from, from probably more than 20 years ago. Uh, and here's some pictures from 1992 uh, with her, her full brood, but at their youngest ages uh, at the Medical College of Virginia at Halloween. Here, Halloween a few years later with uh, Brandon, Aaron, and Miles. Um, and here again in 1996 at the Olympics in Atlanta, and then again in Hawaii in 2002, and then in Stonehenge in 2018, and then now in the last year with baby girl Quinn joining the family. Um, you know, there are a few people in my world that I know that so well balanced their love for their family that someone like me would know the names of all of their children all the time. How, how many times I've heard all the kids' names uh, and what they're up to at the same time that she's doing all the other great things that she does. Um, she has made an enormous difference in this department at Yale University. She's made an enormous difference on a national level. Uh, there's nobody more... Um, uh, more perfect for this uh, gold medal honor uh, today. And again, I'm, I'm sorry that I can't be with you today for this, uh, but I do want to thank you all for taking the time to listen to, to my introduction and to know this very special person. Congratulations, Michelle Johnson. Thank you, uh, Dr. Foreman. And now uh, it's uh, really a great honor and a pleasure to introduce Michelle Johnson, who is uh, the 2021 gold medalist for the ASER. Michelle, it's great to see you, okay? All, all yours. It, it's great to see everyone. I'm sorry, I can't be there in person, but I want you to know how amazing this was. You know, thank you, Jorge, for your part of this, Mark Bernstein and your committee. Uh, for the selection committee, Howie, for that amazing introduction. And I, Suzanne Chung and, and Crystal Archer Aurora, my good friends and, you know, my, my stalwart partners as I've worked with the emergency radiology. It was 2007 when I gave my first talk at the meeting and, uh, you know, I'm not gonna remember everybody's name, but I'm gonna mention Fred Mann, Bob Noveline, Stu Mervis and Shan, who welcomed me as somebody who wasn't reading in the ER, but was standing by the ER, receiving the patient, seeing the patient with the, the clinicians, um, 
interacting and really being on the side of radiologists or physicians. And we're a part of this process that's going to get our patient from the door of the emergency room to the appropriate treatment. This society has is very heterogeneous, right? You know, there are people who are in academics or in private practice, or they read telly at night, or they read telly at the day, uh, or they read ER part-time, or they read it full-time. But everybody is very accepting of each other's strengths. And you have always been accepting of the strange woman who likes carotid blowout and emergencies in the middle of the night that either have things that are blocked or things that are bleeding. But, and I really appreciate that. And I've always felt welcomed here. And that's given me the platform to come up with ideas like our joint program with Suzanne doing emergency spine between the two societies. And it was hard and I was trying to like sell this was gonna be great and it was great. It was an opportunity to take junior faculty and invite them to meetings and give them a platform to do that. When we think about mentoring and we think about sponsoring, we have to think about paying it forward. Remember what other people have done for you and then just do that for somebody else. And that's really important. And it's important to take chances, to take chances. I'm going to go to the ASER meeting. No, I'm not reading in the middle of the night. Is that going to be okay? And if you're strong enough to ask people for help and you're strong enough to try, you know, be excellent, keep the glass half full, have, believe in your abilities and your talents to overcome adversity and do something good. And I think that in the setting of the American Society of Emergency Radiology have only wanted to do good and to teach and to learn from you all. And I'm very, very grateful for this honor. My kids are too, so they're really excited. Michelle, you know how much uh, we all appreciate everything you've done, but we will see you next year for sure. You, again, my, my sense is, that you were a most deserving um, uh, selection from the committee. And by the way, I want to thank on behalf of the society and the executive committee, uh, the work that Mark Bernstein and his committee did in selecting uh, this year's uh, uh, awardees. I have something to show you. You will be receiving your gold medal. Hopefully you're seeing it, but uh, it's uh, it's really, really a great honor that you will have it, and uh, you will. You're adding your name to the list of, of gold medalists is uh, is something that we will all remember. Thank you so much for jo for uh, for joining us. Okay. Thank you so much, Jorge, and thank you to the society.